Hello guys, in this video we will see about the colonies established in India by the Kingdom of Denmark Norway, the Danish East India Company. In the 15th century, the European kingdoms Portugal and Spain launched many voyages to find a sea route to India and in 1498, the Portuguese explorer Vasco da Gama finally found the sea route and arrived at Calicut. Consequently, in the further coming years, Portugal established many more colonies in India like in Goa, Diu and in Daman. The spice trade route was dominated by Portugal in the entire 16th century. Seeing the success of Portugal, other European powers also attempted to establish their own trade route. In 1605, the Dutch arrived in India and established the trading centers at Nagapatnam, Pulikat, Masulipatnam and Chinsura. Then in 1612, the English arrived and established the trading centers at Surat, Bombay, Madras and Calcutta. And in 1668, the French arrived and they established the trading centers at Pondicherry, Yanam, Mahe and Karaikal. We all know about these four European powers, the Portuguese, the Dutch, the English and the French who came to India and established their trading centers. But a very lesser known fact is that even the Kingdom of Denmark also established a trade route and their trading centers in India. Seeing the success of the Dutch and the English in making profit from the spice trade made the Kingdom of Denmark Norway to also establish their own trade route. So Christian IV, the King of Denmark Norway issued the order to establish the Danish East India Company in March 1616. The first Danish fleet left Denmark in 1618 and after two years of voyage, in 1620 the Danish fleet under Admiral Ove Deje reached Asia. Upon arriving in 1620, in the same year, the Danish fleet engaged in a naval combat with the Portuguese fleet of the coast of Karaikal in South India. The Danish were severely defeated by the Portuguese and the Danish sailors somehow escaped to shore but were captured by the soldiers of the Tanjore Nayaka kingdom. The Danish admiral, Ove Deje, convinced the Tanjore Nayaka king, Raghunatha Nayaka, to grant them a piece of land along the coast and signed an agreement with the king. The Tanjore Nayaka king gave them a small piece of land of the coast at Trankobar at an annual rent. The Danish people built Fort Dansborg at Trankobar. Fort Dansborg became the center for the Danish East India Company. The starting years for the Danish East India Company were very hard and difficult as they were not good at trading as other European powers such as the English and the Dutch. They lost almost two-thirds of their ships in sea and failed to deliver the required amount of goods to Denmark in order to make profits. Other than that, the Kingdom of Denmark was also involved in the Thirty Years' War which was happening in Europe and drained most of the treasury in the war. Due to these reasons, the Danish in India were not able to pay the annual rent they promised to the Tanjo king, resulting in the attacks of the Tanjo army at Fort Dansborg. By 1648, the Danish East India Company went bankrupt and after two years in 1650, the Danish king, Frederick III, abolished the Danish East India Company. All the Danish soldiers stationed at Fort Dansborg left India for their home country, but S. killed Anderson Kongsback stayed back and he was a commander of Fort Dansburg and by 1655 he was the sole remaining Danish person in India. He proved to be an effective commander and he was successful in holding Fort Dansburg from the Tanjore attacks with the help of the Portuguese and also some native Indians. 19 years after the end of the Danish East India Company, in 1669, the Danish renewed their interest in the spice trade and sent Captain Seward Adler to India. Sivet Adler became the commander of Fort Dansborg and in 1670, the second Danish East India Company was established. This time, the Danish learned the ways of trade and were very successful in their second venture. In 1696, a trading center was established in Oderwe Tore in present-day Kerala and in 1698, a trading center was established in Gondalpara in present-day West Bengal. The second Danish East India Company was so profitable 
that it even made the king of Denmark, Frederick the Fourth, to demand loan from them. Later, the king was unable to repay the loan to the company. Unable to get back the loan from the king, and also the increase in power of the British and the French in India, resulted in the end of the Second Danish East India Company in 1729. But soon, the next king, Christian the Sixth, restarted the Danish trade route efforts. And in 1732, a new company, the Danish Asiatic Company, was established. In 1755, the Danish established a trading center at Serampur, the second most important center in India after Trancobar. But success was short-lived for this company also, as the British declared war on Denmark, and the British and Danes were at war in Europe as part of the Napoleonic Wars. Denmark suffered a very heavy defeat. and its entire fleet was destroyed the british also attacked the danish colonies in india and the british soldiers occupied the danish forts with the total navy destroyed and no ships available the kingdom of denmark was unable to provide troops and help to india and so by 1845 all the danish colonies in india were sold to britain it was a final end to the danish east india company and also the danish presence in india Let me give an additional fact. The Danish also established a colony in the Nicobar Islands in 1756. And the Kingdom of Italy made an attempt to buy the Nicobar Islands between 1864 and 1868, but it failed. Finally, the Nicobar Islands were sold to the British in 1868. So, thank you guys for watching this video and please subscribe to this channel.